we can start with uh, maybe the village with human for starters. Okay, again, you want to go and go to my profile and clone this, clone and edit, how to create points of interest. So let's get started. Now, uh, whenever you're working with a point of interest, you always want to start with a certain formula, at least the one that I start with. And I usually start with a landscape first and then create your buildings on top of that. And you want to have a theme. So clearly in this tile, there's the village and it's a human village. But there's all kinds of things that you can do. There's villages next to rivers. There's villages next to the ocean. There's villages on, on top of hills. Or there's a village lodged somewhere in... The mountain. Now, because we're working with the world style, there's no reason to make a massive point of interest where well, you're basically showing the entire city and every little house on there. Obviously, that's a bit overkill, and that's something maybe for like a top down city map with our watercolor city style, right? So, maybe that's not the way you want to go. So, instead, think of uh, a point of interest on a world map as a icon or a representation. So, if you're making a village, you don't have to make every single uh, house in the village you only have to you only have to just add in a couple buildings like maybe one or two to kind of represent that it's a small settlement right if it was a large settlement like a city you probably see a couple more houses more than two or three like maybe six so think about what the theme is what race and those things will help to first like craft what it is that you're you're trying to create with your point of interest so the first one is a human and a village and we're just going to create that right away okay so again you're going to want to start with the landscape so let's decide what our landscape is going to be do we want it to be next to a river a mountain is it just going to be a little village on top of a hill and that's kind of like the easiest one so we're going to go into our catalog you just press that o key Press that O key, then press the F key to open up the catalog. And once that catalog is open, you're going to have all the options here. Remember, we're in Fantasy World, so I'll open up the pack structure. So you can kind of take a look at all the different packs that there is. And it looks like it's going to take a second to load. So give me a moment here. It's loading up the mountains and everything. There we go. A little slow, but it is working. Okay, so now look, here we are with our options. Oops, see, I just saw an error right there. Now, okay, so if ever you bump into an error, just to give you a heads up, if ever you bump into a, some kind of an error or a problem, you're going to want to, uh, and you can't save, or let's say that you can save, let's just really quick for the new people are here, let's quickly explain some, some issues, how to uh, address issues that you bump into. You click the hamburger menu up here, and you're going to go to help chat with support. Go here into help support, and you're just going to click send us a message okay and just type in your message and then send it on its way and we will answer that okay now to get rid of it just kind of click this uh orange button right here and i apologize for that loud noise in the background okay so that's how you fix that problem if you're unable to save or refresh make sure that you save an offline backup okay click that save offline backup so you can do that i'm gonna turn my volume down a little bit this thing is super loud in the background Okay, much better. All right, let's keep going. So you're going to start with our background, our uh, landscape first. We'll go back into that catalog, and we're going to choose a theme, right? So let's pick what kind of hill or mountain or whatever our landscape is going to be first. We'll start with something simple. Let's just say a simple hill, and there's nothing else, right? So we'll take a landscape stamp. I'm going to make it kind of big so that I can kind of see it like this so there's our main hill okay now let's just say that you want like the main village uh structure to be here which can be let's say uh where the town hall is and then you have a couple smaller uh, like houses that you can put with hills in the side here and then we'll put one more hill in the back maybe like this and make it just a little bit smaller okay and maybe we can even put it on the side over here Okay, so here's our landscape, and we'll add in trees too, but I'm going to add in trees last. I'm going to put the buildings on first. So let's start with our first structure, and that's going to be like the main town hall or the building that we want to work with. We're not using these flat ones. We're going to use these human settlements right here instead. So let's just go show all here, and these are the three-dimensional ones, or not three-dimensional, isometric, and we're going to pick one that's going to be suitable to maybe like a town hall or maybe it's the main inn and that's where uh, most of the villagers kind of patron that 
building. So let's just go put this on top, just like this. If it's not in the right layer, just go up a layer. You can just do that like this, go up. So this is that first structure. Let's just say this is where the inn is. And let's just say that it's a small village. So we'll just get rid of that, put one more. We'll put a small house on top of this right here. And that's just a simple village, right? Nothing complex. We can put a simple house just right on top. Again, you're gonna have to go up a layer. Make sure it's set to the top like this. Okay, so now there's your, you've got the, an inn, you have one house, you don't need to put in a lot. Then you wanna go back into that catalog and you're going to want to choose whatever kind of buildings that you want. And we've already got now, or uh, trees that you want. We've already got a brown or a green hill. So we don't wanna go with something too green or we do maybe, it's up to you. Let's say you wanna say it's a different time of the season. You want it to be uh, the fall or if you want it to be like a winter building. So it's up to you to sh choose what kind of environment that you want. I'm, again, we're gonna keep it simple. So I'm just gonna use these trees and they don't have to be massive. They don't have to be perfectly to scale. It's just a representation of an icon. Now, if you, of, a, of a village, it's not a full on village. And uh, depending on the style that you're going for, obviously these might be much, much smaller on a map, but I always make my, my POIs big first, and then I group them and then place them on the map and then blend them. Okay, so I'm gonna place the trees. I'm gonna make sure it's set to layer two so that it overlaps over the tree, over the building as well like this and we're just creating kind of that landscape and I also always like to hide some of the line work just a little bit of the line work of the hills because it looks kind of weird or funky so put some there and as always I like to change the size so make some smaller ones because there's usually some variation just put some small trees in like this and then you have like a very very simple kind of simple scene just like this, very, very simple. It's just a simple village. And then if you want, you can always do the path work, which I generally do. You can have a path that goes leading up like this. And I'm gonna turn off those shadows as well. And we'll make the width a bit smaller as well. There we go. Kind of a very simple, nothing complex. And that's really about as simple as it gets. Now you can add in more stuff. Let's say that you wanna add like maybe a big tree that represents uh, like a special tree. Um, give me one second. I'll take a look here what we can, our options are. Let's say that we want to make like one tree that's uh, different but large or something and represents like a like the god tree from like, uh, what was it, Game of Thrones or something like that. You can put in a large tree. Maybe take one of these and make them bigger or whatever it is that you really want to do. You can put in a larger tree, smaller ones. If you don't like that one, just copy and paste a bigger, another one make it really big like this. Don't make it too massive. Don't make it too massive because the line work will get really thick, but big enough to where you could tell like this tree is a bit different from the others. Now, once you've added, once you put together that composition, you just need to group it. So just click that group key, click the group button or press the G key and it will automatically group it and make sure that you label it as well. So I'll change that group to village or human village and that way I know that that's what it is it's a human village and I can kind of move it around without accidentally uh, selecting one stamp and then moving it around and then having to put it back into its original place okay now I'm not going to worry about blending too much but I'll give you an example when you're wanting to uh, blend in your stamp with a map you just make sure that you're using relatively the same color as uh, the landscape. So if you've got this greenish hill, you're obviously not gonna wanna use a purple texture, right? That would look kind of bizarre. So make sure you use kind of a, a texture that's relatively within the same um, range or color that your landscape stamps are in. I'm gonna go ahead and just go bring this down and just put this on here. I think it's set to BG, let's just verify to make sure. And just go ahead like this and make sure that it's around the same texture. And you can add in alphas as well. There's some really nice alphas, I think, in the Parchment World set. Let me just check to see if they have those grass alphas. Swamp, let me see, do they have a grass alpha? There's right there, there's this nice grass alpha. This might work pretty good. You can put this in the negative spaces like this, and you'll kind of see some grass. That way it adds a little bit more texture to it. It's kind of a nice way to go about it. That way you don't have to like add a bunch of grass stamps. You just have to paint it on. And that's something you always want to do. You always want to 
you always want to uh, let the tool do most of the work for you because you don't want to put down 50 different grass stamps to show some kind of depth or trying to break up the, the negative space around the POI, the point of interest, you'll want to um, you'll want to use an alpha texture instead. That way you're doing less work, okay? Don't give yourself more work. Okay, so I just, you know, an alpha just means that there's a transparency. So when I apply this, watch what happens when I apply this. You see how it retains the texture underneath? Right, that means there's not, it's not covering the whole thing. That's what an alpha is. There's a transparency built into it, and that way it's only showing these grassy artifacts instead of anything else. So that's what an alpha is, just in case you're getting kind of confused, okay, about that. So that's the basic way that you set up kind of a POI. You've established 